Welcome back, and thanks for joining us for another one of these little chats. Uh, this one's a fun one. It's touching on a topic that uh, we haven't addressed for some time. Been waiting to see what, what kind of movement there was on it. And that is the solid state battery or glass battery. Now, I'll link in the description to uh, a video that we did earlier for those of you who are interested in what the glass battery is and what a solid state battery is. The um, video that we did aged quite well. It, uh, the, the information that's in there is, uh, uh, is still valid. It pertains a great deal to the information that was released by Dr. John Goodenough, who invented the lithium ion battery cell, and another professor, Dr. Maria Helena Braga, uh, who is uh, uh, at the same time uh, uh, kind of working with uh, the same principles, the, the solid state batteries. She was also uh, uh, working with using sodium ions as opposed to lithium ions as a, a transport mechanism. But you can take a look at that uh, previous video and, and kind of see what it is we're, we're talking about. But the interesting news is that they just recently applied for the patent for the solid state battery, the glass battery. And so obviously that means that they were able to demonstrate it and uh, get uh, uh, further, uh, further funding for it. So I'm also going to link to the patent application because I'm going to be touching on that quite a bit as we go through this. And I, I'm, I'm going to distill it down. And so for those that are interested in, in a more technical description of what they did, go ahead and, and, and have a look at the raw information and, uh, and, and, and have a look at that. But the interesting thing that will we're going to kind of pair it up with is the recent announcement by Samsung that they were all of a sudden working on their own version of a, of a solid state battery and they made this grand announcement. Well, again, one of the recent videos that we did was a Q&A. One of the subscribers had, had asked, well, what, you know, what about Samsung's solid state battery? And when I looked into it, there really wasn't anything there. They, uh, it, was just a, it was just a press release. Now, that contrasted with what Dr. Goodenough and Dr. Braga did back in 2015, 2016, when they released their paper on the glass battery, it was very comprehensive. And it was, it was very clear the kind of path that they, were, uh, that they were on. Now, the interesting thing that we've also discovered recently is that uh, there is a resurgence of interest on Tesla's part in the Austin area. We'll get to that in just a second. So obviously the interesting thing to me is I want to follow the money trail. I want to see now that they've patented this and also knowing what I knew about it in 2015, 2016 and, and, and you know, setting up this kind of a timeline for how long Tesla might have been working on this. Again, that's something else we'll touch on. But I'm very interested in who's interested. I want to know who's now starting to throw money their way. And I came across one company called Hydro-Quebec. Now, Hydro-Quebec, uh, they are interested in making mass storage devices for, obviously, storing hydroelectric and wind uh, energy. And they're very interested in a battery that has these capabilities, the amount of longevity that these uh, batteries will have. And again, part of our speculation in the past was, is what Tesla's working on as far as this million mile battery, is that this solid state glass battery? How much of this technology is interconnected, all right? Well, in um, uh, 2014, this is a quote from uh, Dr. Goodenough. 
Now, just recently, Elon Musk, his biolocator from his Twitter account, wound up popping up in Texas just before he put this tweet out, this um, poll that, uh, that he released. Now, I'm not naive enough, nor I don't believe are any of you, that this is all just a coincidence. Right? I think that now there is a large resurgence of interest now into the Austin area. Uh, I can conceive of a, uh, a, a partnership between Tesla and the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, all of this kind of dovetails in also with the saber rattling that we've heard from Samsung. All of a sudden now they, they want to say how, uh, how advanced their, uh, their, their technology is. Now, um, the race to throw cash at this involves not only Hydro-Quebec, uh, but also Panasonic, Samsung, a couple other players. And all of this, I think, is related and, and interconnected to this release now of their uh, patent for the, the solid state batteries. Now, the interesting thing is we've also discussed in a previous video on how these kinds of things are funded. These patents are actually owned by the University of Texas. And so it's the University of Texas that's going to wind up then benefiting from, uh, 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 from these patents, as it should be. They're the, you know, they're the research agent for, uh, uh, for all of this. So with that, now we can kind of better understand what's going on with all of this. But I can't help but think that Samsung and Hydro-Quebec and anybody else that now wants to get in on all of this, they're four years on, right? The, uh, um, uh, the quote that I showed you from Dr. Goodenough, that was, that was in 2014. So here we, you know, here we are you know, six years later, and now all of these other companies are starting to, uh, uh, to come on board and, and work with them. So this is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see what, uh, um, what happens moving forward. Now, let's go ahead and crack into the actual patent and some of the things that were in there. And so with that, we'll bring up our first one here. So this represents a huge shot across the bow to anybody who came late to this party. The uh, battery as described in the patent is, is light and uh, capacious and, and uh, good energy values. It's recyclable. It doesn't have any uh, nasty uh, uh, materials that are going to be problematic when you either try and recycle or dispose of the thing. And, uh, and, and then it's, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's light. Uh, and cheap to manufacture. So, <laughs> as they say in the infomercials, if that wasn't enough, but wait, there's more. And so then they go on to describe what we had discussed also in an earlier video, and that is that, the, that the, the battery acts as a capacitor when you're starting to charge it. So it accepts a charge very, very uh, rapidly. Now, again, I don't know how much of a charge it accepts in a uh, capacitive way before it then... Uh, you have to slow the charge down, but you're not going to harm the battery because the battery doesn't have a paste electrolyte. It doesn't, it doesn't suffer the same types of thermal shock that the, uh, that the standard lithium-ion batteries of today do. So you uh, have all of these, uh, these outstanding holy grail-like properties for this glass battery. And then finally, the... Uh, patent application goes on to describe a few of the applications for the battery, power tools and uh, that kind of a thing. Anything you can imagine that, uh, that needs to be recharged that you might like to have a battery in that will last for 20 years. Anybody who's had power tools, you know, you, you go through those things and, uh, and, and they only have so many charge cycles and then you have to uh, uh, you know, dispose of them, or, you know, send them to recycling. And so, this really is quite the game changer. And again, I have to stress this quote from Dr. Goodenough. The the he's talking about is Tesla. This was a quote from 2014. They were already chatting 
in 2014. So these other companies, uh, Hydro Quebec and, uh, and, and Samsung and all of these other companies that now might be looking to uh, uh, capitalize on these, on these patents, they're six years behind Tesla. In conversation, uh, in actuality, it looks like uh, Tesla was giving uh, huge investments in research in that 2015, 2016 uh, time period. Tesla was uh, obviously, as we discussed previously, uh, they'd been building out their own battery test facilities, working heavily with uh, Jeff Don uh, in uh, developing ways to kind of speed test their million mile battery and also, I'm sure, this. Uh, uh, this, this glass battery. But then we come to uh, the thing that I'm going to leave you with, and that is, is that all of this that I've just kind of laid out, I think is a little bit of a window into what Battery Investor Day is going to be like. And uh, Brooks, at Drag Times, he did an exhaustive examination of the capacity between a Model 3 battery and a Model Y battery. And what he discovered was is that the uh, Model Y battery, well, the Model 3 battery had uh, uh, 72 uh, uh, kilowatt hours or so uh, that he was able to, uh, to verifiably use out of it. And the Model Y had 77. So you have a roughly five kilowatt hour larger battery in the Model Y. So I started thinking about that. It's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Monroe and Associates find out when they finally get to tear into the battery pack. I don't know for those of you that uh, follow that kind of a thing, uh, um, great channel. They, uh, um, uh, they go in and they, they pull apart everything and then they, they catalog it. So he'll be able to tell us how many modules it has in it. But I'll be very interesting, interested to see how what they are size-wise, because it's entirely possible that Tesla has been installing these products in limited numbers in things that they're already producing, whether that's Powerwall uh, uh, 3.0 or uh, the Model Y. Certainly these types of batteries, I think, are going to be in the Plaid version of the Model S, as well as the uh, new Roadster. And uh, semi as well, you know. The uh, these are all all the all the qualities that you saw released in that uh, in that patent application. Those are all things that the the automotive industry is uh, going to really take to. This is uh, this is going to be a real interesting uh, interesting few months uh, as we start to see what Tesla finally unveils, and so. We'll look into our crystal ball and the uh, prediction that, uh, that I'm going to make as far as that goes is that Tesla is going to be setting up shop in Austin, Texas. They're going to be working very closely with, uh, uh, with the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, because of what we've already shown with the relationship between Tesla and Goodenough and Braga with their uh, glass battery, I think we're going to start to see some huge movement in this. Uh, the other thing that bears mentioning that uh, Maria Helena Braga brings to the table is that she has, as you can see in that patent list uh, of associated patents, um, that she's very interested in, in sulfur and in sodium for use in these batteries as a replacement for lithium. And then that obviously gets you into the point where you're able to use seawater and process seawater to get your battery components. So what a time we live in. And I, I, I feel for everybody that's going through this shutdown period, but um, things will recover things will recover. I wish you all the best with your own systems and wish you all the best in the future. I hope that your families are healthy and uh, I wish a speedy recovery for all of you to get back in the game when this is all over.
Thank you for joining us.